Well, watch out for Team USA in Russia 2018. This is China's television broadcasting live from Lagos. I'm Cecilia Amarogbe. Welcome to Sports This Morning. Here are the headlines. Coach Stephen Kershaw says he will not abandon the Super Eagles, but conceded he's yet to be offered a new contract by the Nigerian Football Federation. Well, it's heartbreaking for Tim Howard on the ninth, where he made 15 saves, more than any other player in a World Cup game between 1966 and 2014. That's the man on your screen, a heartbreak for him, definitely. Well, the casualties continue at the All England Club. For Nadal, he has now failed to reach the quarterfinals since 2011. And for Maria Sharapova, he will certainly have to wait to achieve a dream of a second title at Wimbledon. Fata Salam will be joining me after this report on Coach Stephen Kershaw's success with the Super Eagles so far. Ah, how do you do this move? Ask his wife. <laughs> Wives who know, know that Olympic low cholesterol milk is just what their husbands deserve to stay fit throughout the day. Olympic milk. Live fit. Live life. Stephen Kesh's appointment did not come as a surprise to many football fans given the precarious situation of Nigerian football after the Super Eagles and the predecessor Samson Siasia fails to qualify for the 2012 African Cup of Nations. The former Nigeria captain who has handled Togo and Mali got down to business with a target set by the Nigeria Football Federation in view. The targets before Keshi were to qualify the Super Eagles for the 2013 African Cup of Nations, get to the semi-finals of the tournament, and qualify the team for the 2014 FIFA World Cup. By corner, here's the follow-up from Mba. Mba. he scores! Nigeria have the lead! Keshi, against all odds, led the country to win the 2013 African Cup of Nations in South Africa. Well, we have a new champion in a second or two. Yes, we will! Nigeria have won! After the team's triumph, Keshi tendered his resignation, citing disrespect by officials of the Football Federation. He was made to rescind his decision after the then Sports Minister Balaji Abdullah stepped in. Don't talk bad about me because you don't like my face. But speak the truth, you know, just say it the way it is, the way you say it. And why would I take criticism? I, I live in a country where they criticize you all the time, you know, so it's not, it's not a big thing. Oh. Keshi again drew the attention of the government after he was owed salaries up to seven months, which set him at loggerheads with his employers. He saw the Super Eagles through the qualifying to the World Cup and became the first local coach to take them to the second round, their first since 1998. The 53-year-old revealed that he has not been offered a contract extension by the NFF, which has raised speculations that he could be headed to South Africa's Bafana Bafana. actually saw the success recorded by coach Stephen Keshe. Well, he's one leg in, one leg out. Tyre Salam actually carved out that headline sure. because he told his players after the game against Ferns where he said, well, that might just be his last game because Nigerian Football Federation is yet to renew his contract. And not only that, because, well, his contract ends with the World Cup. So if they offer him another one, he might just take it or he may not take it. But it's everywhere that he's out of the job. But he said he's definitely not going to abandon his shape. Even if he's going to do that, he will make it formally and not on the pages of newspapers. Tyler Salam is here with me. Tyler, good morning. Yeah, um, great to be here, like, uh, as always. Uh, yesterday, uh, we talked about it and we said 
And actually, in front of our caption, there was a question mark in front of it because it wasn't official as of yesterday and even till now. Yeah, it's not done it's not formally. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. You, you can say some things with your mouth, but once it's not, you haven't put it in, um, in, in pen, you haven't written it down and made it official, then it doesn't really count. So until Keshi does that, then we have to agree he still remains the, the Super Eagles coach. Even though me, I feel um, he's gone, really. He's gone. Okay, yeah. that's what you think. Okay, let's just take a look at his quote, what he said, you know, after the report came out that he has left his position. If you can take a look at it, we just see his actual words, what he said, because he actually said it was taken out of contest. Now, this is it. What I said to my players was that maybe my last match at the helm of affairs in the national team because my contract terminates with the World Cup, and I have not been offered a new one. I was a bit shocked that the global media went to town to say I have called it quits with the national team. Resignations are not done on the pages of newspapers, but formally. That's Coach Stephen Keshe yeah. coming from here. Very clear, very clear. He hasn't, he hasn't put it down in writing. So, <laughs> yeah, but, but the thing is, not only the Nigerian media, the global media... Everybody, everywhere. they all had it on the website. Everywhere, you know, it's everywhere. Beep, and then the likes of BBC But, but you know, well, if you so really don't want to be misunderstood, so yeah. why would he have to tell his players that the game against France was actually his last yeah, game? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, see his last game. Yeah, yeah. The players, um, because the players actually get to um, hear this information first of all, mm -hmm. first and before he goes, before he's made official. I think that's what happened. And about now, it's come out um, to say he hasn't done anything official now. So we'll see how it pounds out. Yeah, really. definitely. But, but I know, I, I think it's gone, really. There's, there's really we're actually no waiting back. for a call from the media officer. We're trying to reach him in Brazil because the team will be coming back on Friday. They're still in Brazil. They will arrive in Nigeria on Friday. We're trying to reach him for him to actually clear more air on that because that quote we got, we got, got a courtesy of him, what he spoke to, told us last night concerning the resignation saga. NFL, well, they are yet to talk about it. No reports from them, no statement from them, and most of them are still in Brazil. We'll just wait for them to get to Nigeria. And of course, we'll definitely get to the end of yeah. this issue because we need to clear it now. Yes. 2015 is just there. The yeah. African Nations Cup in Morocco next year is just a few months away, definitely not up to one year. So whatever we're going to do, either they're going to leave him to continue or they look for a coach immediately for the Super Eagles to start their qualifier matches for 2015. Yeah, I agree totally with you, um, Cecilia. Everything has to be sorted out very fast now. Um, this tournament is over for Nigeria, and they have to start looking ahead to the next one in, in Morocco next year. So um, all this um, uncertainty um, over um, Keshi's um, future really has to be um, dealt with um, swiftly so we can move forward. Uh, but like I said, the NFL really haven't said much, but I got a quote from them, quote from them saying, Basically, what Kesha said today that they're denying his resignation, they've not seen anything as far as they are concerned. Yeah. So Just like Kesha said, he has not formally uh -huh. put so, it up. So, I, I but would, they need I to offer that. him a new contract so that we'll know where we are. Yeah, that's what they need to do next. I'm sure everything will be resolved then when they come back from Brazil. Yeah. They can't do all that um, away from over there. They, they need, need to, to come home, of to the Secretariat. have a meeting it's, and clarify the whole issue. Exactly. So that's what we're waiting for now. They just have to do it very, very fast. Very fast, urgently, because there is really no time. We wouldn't want to do another fire brigade of project. We have to wait until nine minutes to have preparations. Of course, should anything happen, we'll blame it on the usual blame game, which is starting preparations late for a major tournament. Okay, moving on now on the program. Some matches decided last night. Actually, the last matches in the second round of the FIFA World Cup, where you have Argentina and, of course, Belgium had to leave it very, very late for them to book a place in the quarterfinals. This is what you have on your screen, the quarterfinal fixtures. Your friends playing Germany, Brazil, and Colombia. These two first matches will be decided on Friday in Argentina, Belgium, Netherlands, and Costa Rica. That will be on Saturday. Now, the big games we actually want to talk about is the game between Argentina and Switzerland, then USA and Belgium. It was really a cracker. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, yesterday, we were expecting... Um, 180 minutes of football, but what we ended up getting yesterday was just incredible. Both games went into extra time. And like, like we said, it, it was always going to be a tight one um, between um, uh, those two sides, Argentina against um, Switzerland. I talked about um, Otman Ipfield actually coming up with a very cagey yes. game plan. And that's exactly what it did there. They didn't come out to play at all, and that's they allowed Argentina 
uh, to come at them. But unfortunately for Argentina, they couldn't really break them down. Uh, it Thank seems you. if Messi doesn't do something for Precisely. Argentina, you know, you know, they're in trouble. The, the, the fans are actually celebrating. Now, if you can see the celebrations on your screen, they're celebrating the victory because it wasn't really about the Argentine <laughs> squad, so yeah. to speak. It was just a moment of brilliance between Zabalata, Leonel Messi, and of course, Ange Di Maria, yeah. who woke up from his slumber because exactly. he was slipping all through the game. Yes. And of course, he was able to, you know, get that into the net. And at yeah. the end of the day, the Switzerland, for me, it was really heartbreaking uh, for them, especially for Shakiri, who was all over the place all painful, through the game. Painful, painful loss for them. Uh, it was a very tight game, like I said. And um, I think they will have to blame themselves, actually, for the, for the, for the game plan uh, they employed uh, in that match, because I felt that Argentines can really be got at. Really. The defense is not very, it's not a very solid um, backline for Argentina. So probably if um, Switzerland had come out really, they've, they've been a little bit more ambitious. They would have um, uh, worried Argentina like they did towards the end of the extra time when they had to come out and get a goal. You know, we saw them, they had a last minute <laughs> shot that hit the post and the defender didn't know how the rebound came off him came again. Off, and yeah. Well, yeah, that was so close. And I'm sure if they had decided to be a little bit more ambitious earlier in the game, they could have worried Argentina really because the Argentine team, their defense um, is not really... Um, um, spectacular. At all, it's not really spectacular. Of course, the other game of the night, a huge one, the Belgians, of course, they really have to celebrate this one because it took the brilliance of one man, Lukaku. Yeah. What was he doing on the bench in the first full 90 yeah, minutes? Very, very simple answer to that. All through the tournament, the first um, three games of the tournament, Lukaku has been really off color. He hasn't played well at all, and um, uh, rightfully, um, Origi came in for him. He had to start. Origi has been the man, the 19 year old, very good striker. He came in and he did very well. But the thing about Mark Wilmot and um, this tournament is yes. he, he has been able to get his um, substitution spot on. Yeah, yet, yeah yet again, um, he brought on somebody from the bench to, to change um, the game. And it in was just table. a few minutes into it, of course, he made the first. <laughs> The first assist. Yeah. The second one. Came, yeah. He came, he came on Lukaku, very motivated. He hasn't done well at this World Cup so far. He came on very motivated. He wanted to prove a point. And that's what he did. It's a shame he had to do it against his teammate, okay, his ex teammate in Team Howard, who was awesome in goal for, 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 for the United States. But Lukaku is the man, really. He was the one that changed the game in, in, in Belgium's um, favor. A good, good one for him there. One goal, one assist. And Kevin De Bruyne as well, too, was awesome in that game. He got a goal and he assisted um, Lukaku as well. But you can't really fall. Now, let's, you look, can't at, fall let's the, look at Julian Green. Okay. <laughs> now, that, that's, that's a 19-year-old boy, yeah. you know, who came in from the bench. And, of course, moments into coming in, he was able to get the only goal of the match for them. Um, amazing stuff. Like, came on first time. Beautiful goal as well. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't um, a tapping or anything like that. Ball over the top, and he, uh, he had his eyes on it all through. He struck it swiftly, and um, Katoa had no chance really. Yeah, and, for that. And uh, like I always say, um, a lot of people feel it's um, football. Uh, hindsight is ten over ten. So. Uh, people were saying it should have started on time, it should have come in earlier than that, but nobody would have known, yeah, we would have done what he did yesterday. So I don't really uh, subscribe to that at all. But he's a very good young player, someone we have to um, watch, out, watch for out for in future. Yes, Hopefully definitely. he doesn't go the way of um, Freddie Adu. Yeah, I, I hope not. And of course, you had President Barack Obama actually watching same USA, and he said something that when he walked in, of course, he didn't really want to be the one that made them not to lose the game. But he walked in, of course, was able to cheer them to victory. You can have the upside of that. Maybe what he's saying there, Team USA or what?